Third one, the meek inherit the earth. Now, I'm just going to say this right away. Meekness is one of the most misunderstood character traits in today's society. People just don't get meekness. They automatically associate with weakness, mainly because they, they rhyme, <laughs> I think. But, but they, you know, the word meekness actually translates as gentle in the Greek. And it has the connotations of being mild or soft. And as a human attitude... It means to be gentle of spirit, submissive, quiet, and tender-hearted. Now, listen to those. Gentle of spirit, submissive, quiet, and tender-hearted. These are the opposite of what the world says we should be. The world wants you to be strong, bold, rebellious, and loud. But Jesus is calling us to be gentle Submissive, quiet, and tender-hearted. And if we want true happiness, we need to exhibit meekness. Now, what's interesting is, is that meekness and poor in spirit are very similar. But they have two different functions. The difference between being poor in spirit and being meek or gentle is that poor in spirit focuses on our sinfulness, while meekness focuses on God's holiness. Okay, so this is where it shifts, and this is why this is so important to the foundation. The first one, poor in spirit, we realize that without God we're nothing. Mourning our sin, we realize that we're sinners in need of His grace. But meekness is not so much looking at ourselves, but it's looking at the greatness of God and how we measure up to that. So, the foundation of happiness in every believer's life starts with recognizing that without Jesus, we're poor in spirit. Without Jesus, we have no way to overcome the guilt, the shame, and the penalty of our sin. And without Jesus, we'll never know the standard of holiness that God sets. And so we see this holiness of God. And the basic attitude of humility underlies all three of these. And when we look at all three of these virtues, all three of these, these attitudes, we're made humble by seeing us as we truly are. And when we look at God, we're made humble by seeing how righteous and worthy He is. And so this morning, I just want to challenge you guys. We're going we're gonna to build upon this more. And, I, and, I, and there's a reason that I'm not going into meekness more. Because you're like, wait, wait, talk about meekness more. Because I know my wife's sitting at home. She's like, you didn't go into meekness enough. Well, it's because of this. Because meekness or, or, or the third beatitude folds right into the fourth beatitude, which is a hunger and thirst for righteousness. And so I, I want to explain it a lot more next week when we kind of get into that, which I don't have time to do this morning. But, but let me wrap this up. The blessings of the beatitude are for those who are realistic about their sinfulness, who are repentant of their sins, and who are responsive to God in His righteousness. Those who are unhappy are often proud and arrogant. But those who are happy are often humble and and repentant. And the fact is, is that when, when we exhibit poor in spirit, mourning over our sin, and a meekness, there's this 
inner peace that comes in us. There's a, a scripture in Philippians, and, and let me get to it. But Philippians 4.11 says this. It says, not that I'm speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situ- situation I am to be content. Now, Paul spoke those words to the Philippians as he was going through a difficult time in his life. He's writing this, then this letter about joy and being a unified church and, and, and you know, just kind of staying with things as he was just struggling with, with the areas of you know, the, the, the persecutions and the troubles in other churches. But Paul was always able to be happy and to have joy because even though there was all these swirling, these problems swirling around him, and all these difficulties that kept him up late at night, and, and, and all these physical infirmities, his attitude was right. His attitude was where it should be. And the fact is, is that he knew that his complete trust was in the Lord, and that, it, that God was going to take care of him. And the thing is, is that if we can begin to start to exhibit these attitudes... I think that you will start to see a lot more happiness and peace and joy and contentment in your life. The main question that the Beatitudes ask are, who are you going to be? Who are you going to be? And that's what Jesus is challenging with, and we'll finish it again next week. Let's